so this is the electrical harness that's going to come with your kit and we're going to go through the, all the bits and pieces of it. We'll show you how to install the whole system and, uh, and the tools you'll need. You really just need a, a, uh, a crimper, um, a little pry bar is what I like to use, but any, any little pry bar, you'll see where this comes in um, a little later, and then a little star uh, Torx to take the OEM track off the floor here. Now when you get your box, um, with all of the components, the first thing you're want, want, going to want to do is take out the, the packing slip and make sure that everything that's in your box matches what's on the packing slip. So with this uh, electrical kit, we're going to take everything out here. This is a kit for the OEM auxiliary battery. So this van has the auxiliary battery, the OEM auxiliary battery, so it gets a little bit of a different setup than the van that has um, the, the regular battery. Um, so we have zip ties, we have the, the 100 amp breaker, we have these little terminals that connect the USB and um, 12 volt sockets. This is a little tail for the lights. Here's the fuse block and the fuse block has fuses in the block and then these the little terminals that will connect to the fuse block. Um, as well as a couple of brass uh, ring terminals. Here are your USB and then your 12 volt outlets. And we'll be screwing those onto the panels when we get to that point. These are the Metripack connections for the fans. And again, this will all make sense as we go through. And two, or four closed end caps for the auxiliary systems. If you're not gonna be using the auxiliary systems, we like to close off those wires. Here is the driver's side harness and the passenger side harness. So once you get everything, go through your, your checklist, make sure that you see all of the pieces. And what I like to do is just put it right back in the box after you make that check. You see that it's there and that way you're not going to lose any pieces um, when you're building the van out. After you make your checklist, just go ahead and make sure that it all goes back into the same place. And now this box can live in your garage. Everything's tidy with it. You put your checklist back in it and you know that when you get to this part of the build, you'll be able to work right through it. Now, if anything is missing, this is the time to give us a call and say, hey, you know, the USB outlet didn't make it onto my list or whatever it is, and we'll be able to get it to you before the day of your install. It does happen sometimes, and we work to uh, eliminate that. So, we'll start with how to install the whole harness. First with the driver, or the passenger side uh, wiring harness, You'll notice the passenger side one, it's the bigger one, it's the more complex one, it has more uh, of the um, splits coming off of the main harness. So it's the bigger harness. And it's zip tied together, and it's wound in such a fashion that you should be able to find the thick end, and you can start with this side. What you'll do is you'll notice there's there's one brake with a small tail on it. Okay, so that's the first brake. And then move like further down until you get to the second brake. And this one shows a long tail that splits off of it, okay? This second brake rests in this corner right up here. So, I take the thick end of the harness and I pass it through over the top here. And I pass it through until I get to that thick or that uh, that break with the long tail that comes off of it. And there's a little uh, metal sort of um, you know piece of sheet metal edge right there. I put the thick part of this on that sheet metal edge and then a little bit later when we're doing the hush mat I'll actually put some hush mat over that and soften that whole sort of uh, space that 
behind here that this is passing behind so that it doesn't irritate the harness. So the, the long part that we just passed through, we're just going to let that fall to the floor right here for now. It will end up passing underneath the passenger seat and then the driver's seat, and I'll show you how we do that. But from this side forward, you'll notice that on the ends of these, they have different colored um, pieces of tape or tags, uh, depending on which harness you get. Um, as we move forward here, we're, we're actually starting to shift towards tags. But for instance, this tag has, or this wire here has a, has a purple piece of tape. This wire here has a white piece of tape. So they are also color coded on the, on the side that plugs into the, um, the fuse block so you know which wire coincides with the other end. The white is for the fans. The orange is for the first auxiliary stub out. The purple is for the second auxiliary stub out, and the blue is for all of the, the blue is for all of the uh, USB and 12 volt outlets. So, this first split is actually the fan split, and this wiring harness is made for both the uh, the 170 and the 144. So you'll have a little bit extra in the 170 of the very tail end of it that's made to go, um, if you want to set a fan further down the 170 uh, body, then you'll, there's enough length for it. We'll take this first split with the fan and we'll actually take all these wires and start passing them through the corrugation in the roof. And I pass it back to the bays that I need them to be in. With the split, this first split, you'll notice, will end right here. And that's because we, we'll take our little ends for the fans, cap them here, and then this fan will plug in right here. Okay? So, with this first split being nestled into this corner, you'll start feeding your wire down, your fan split will stub out here, and then we'll continue the second or the this part of the wire further down until we get to this fan. And at which point, because this is again long for the 170, we can just cut it short, and then we'll put our little uh, terminal, metri pack terminal for this fan. So I'm just going to continue to pass the rest of the harness through this corrugation. Um, and I'll tell you where the stub outs are. There's going to be two that shoot over here and then one that goes all the way back and ends up as our tail USB outlet. Um, but I just pass them right through here for now. So at this point right here, I have one of the, the second auxiliary, which is the purple uh, wrapped wire, and a split for the blue, okay? And at this point, I send it over to this side corrugation here, and I run it with, the, with this, this auxiliary when I stick it right here. Um, and it's an auxiliary for a power awning or any other kind of electrical systems that you want to run from this corner. 
they end up being pretty handy to have pre-run. This this blue one is the USB um, stub out, and I'll actually take this one, and on the inside of this area right here, you'll feel a little channel, and I pass this down through that channel, and it ends up right down here. Okay. So this is your USB or your 12 volt outlet for this outlet down here. Your stub out now is, is sitting up here. And again, what I'll end up doing is I'll put those, those two caps on here um, that came in the, 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 the kit and I'll zip tie it together and I'll let it live right up here. And you'll see how that all works by the end of this video. Now we have the white fan and we have the USB tail and you have a choice right now this right here can be a difficult um, can be a difficult rib to pass under because the corrugation of the roof comes together right here sometimes it's really gooey with the butyl that they use um, and sometimes it's not so if it's not super gooey and it's easy to pass through um, also you can remove OEM uh, uh, tags that are plugged in here because you're not going to be using the OEM light wire anymore. Or if you do use it, you um, can power your, your you know LED lights on it or cut into the um, cut into the panels and reset the lights. If you do that though, you do not want the the insulation to be directly behind it because they get, they get very hot. So this one. Um, Again, I'm gonna to try to pass it underneath. I'm not too concerned if it doesn't work out well. Um, this one seems to be pretty easy to pass under. And I'll do that one for the fan. But this, this wire that goes all the way down to the back, I'm just gonna bring it over to the side right here and pass it down uh, behind the wall. Okay, once you get to this back corner here, again, there's another little channel that you'll be able to feel with your hand and take this end, pass it down into that little channel and drop it down behind the window bay here. When it goes across the bottom, it kind of naturally wants to snake over. Let it come over the top of this panel here. This is a little uh, sort of push back on the on the on the uh, body here let it come over onto this side and then pull it down and it will live in this area again there's extra for the length of the 170 um, but as it is right now if you have it come down right through here it actually gets in the way of this swing arm that that uh, this latch that comes through and passes through here so you want to have the wire pass over the top come down on the inside We'll then put our terminals on here and connect it to the back of the panel. So that's the path. And this is, of course, the fan that we can clip. Take about three feet off of that. And then this will connect into the fan here. Okay. So for now, just to get it out of our way, we'll set it right up here. That's as easy as it gets as far as in, of the pathway. Right here, this, you just want to make sure you have the slack. So We'll, we'll be passing a channel across here. Um, and anywhere where this wire is going to rub against the steel, I'll put a piece of uh, hush mat um, over, over it so it's not an aggressive um, irritation on the, on the uh, wires themselves. So let's go ahead. This is the passenger side that we did. We'll go ahead and move over to the driver's side. Okay, so on the driver's side of the harness, um, it is, again, considerably less extensive. You can see it's much smaller. There are not as many stub outs or splits coming out of it. Um, but we still use 
a similar um, method in locating how to start. Uh, I just grabbed the the um, zip ties here because you will need one of the long zip ties to start this process. And what we do is again we find the thicker side of the of the harness and start with it which of course is right here and the same principle goes in that this time it's the very first split so here's the harness where it's all put together in one tail we move our up to the first split. It's three wires coming out of it in this harness here. And that first split, we're going to zip tie it to the V pillar. Okay? Zip tie it up. Now, with our three harnesses, or three wires that come out, now we can drop One of the blues and the yellow are going to be the two short ones. The yellow is the lights, yellow for light, and it's going to run across the top here. But the blue is going to shoot down this side of the window. What I want to do, just to make things clean uh, for the end, is I actually will push it over the top of the OEM harness right here and then drop it down that hole on the inside of this channel right here. Okay, so as it passes through, it comes out of the bottom down here, and that's where you want this to live. The yellow one, which is the light one, will do the same thing where we pass it behind here, and we'll pass it through two of the bays, and then it'll stop short of going through the third bay, okay? And now with the, with the, the last one, which is the tail, it's just one long um, tail that is, is uh, color coded in blue for the USB and 12 volts. And it'll run the full length of the vehicle and then down to that back corner, just like the passenger harness did. And again, we can shoot over and run it down the wall um, rather than through the ceiling once we get past the zero line. All right, so we'll run it through the ceiling first. Now here's that, that, uh, rib in the roof where all the corrugations come down together. So I'm gonna bypass that. I'm gonna shoot over the top of the OEM wiring harness right after the zero line here, and then just pass it along the wall. And when we put our hush mat in, again, I will soften any of these edges and I'll actually put the hush mat across the top of this so that it holds it in place and it keeps it from slapping around or rattling. We have a long tail for the 170, so we won't be using all of it, but we'll pass it through the corner here. And it comes out the bottom. And the same thing, we want it to come over the top of this little flange that kicks back and touches the wall, and we come down on the inside of this uh, this little base to avoid the swing arm that comes in here. So again, we'll, we want to bring it back 
uh, on the back side of this little flange to the front side of this base so that we can avoid the swing arm that's going to close right through here. So again, tuck it over the top just like you did on the passenger side. You will see there's a considerable amount of extra uh, a tail here. What I like to do when we get to the next part where we're putting our terminal ends on is I actually just run this down, touch it to about where the floor is, and that's where I cut this off. Um, and then I attach my terminals onto this. So we'll get to that part next. So to finish off the pathway for the wiring harnesses, we're gonna talk about the zip ties a little bit. Um, one zip tie has this little tree on the end, and that's what we use to fasten it to the B pillar here. Um, and the other zip tie is just a long regular zip tie, and we'll show you where these come in. We use those primarily for zip tying the OEM harness to our uh, furring strip that we'll, we'll show you how we place that a little bit later. So for these guys, the little Christmas tree ones, um, I like to wrap it around the wire first. It's a little easier than trying to wrap it in. And you can see there's these OEM holes. So there's OEM holes that are placed. As you move down, you're not gonna wanna use the ones that are on the inside edge here. Leave those alone because they'll interfere with, the, with your B-pillar cover. So I put them on these holes that are kind of stubbed or you know on a little platform out. This goes behind the little plastic right here. This is the, all right? So this is now floating behind that. And I'll put the first one in this hole and I give it a little bit of slack, okay? And I'm going to snug it up, but I'm not going to cinch it really tight yet. I'm, going, I'm, I'm not going to do that until I have put all of the uh, all the wires together. And the last thing that I do is kind of um, cinch it up real tight. That way I can still work with it a little bit. Let's put it onto these little holes, cinch it up, leaving it a little bit loose. We'll go back and cinch it tight and clip these ends. Now, after you get to this point, what we're going to do is run it underneath this seat. And I like to work um, with the seat off. This one has a swivel seat, it's a little more complex and it doesn't need to come off. So I'll show you how we do it without taking it off. Um, but you can, you can also take off the seat. What I do to come through here and get this underneath the seat is I take this piece of foam, I push it out of the way, I'm moving this as it's, you know, it's gonna naturally be curved, kind of like a banana. I push the curve towards the seat and I slip it right underneath there and work it towards the seat. Now, so if you looked right through here, you're gonna notice you can see it passing, kind of being guided in by the OEM wires that are also passing underneath the seat right there. Underneath the seat pedestal, Right here, there is a little cut out, and that's where we pass these things through. Move this out of the way, and reach in here, and that's where we're able to pull this wiring harness through. We're gonna continue to pull it through here until we pass that first split. That first auxiliary split, the orange one, will live underneath this seat. And that is used to power, usually it's used to power some kind of heating system. Um, I know people have used it to put stereo equipment under there. But you can see now, this whole wiring harness is, uh, that we just passed through is living underneath the passenger seat now. The next step will be to pass this part through the channel on the other side of this post to the driver's seat, okay? So I'll show you how we do that, and that starts actually from inside the van. Okay, so we're gonna remove the OEM uh, little plate here, that's, and this keeps the, the, uh, the rubber mat tucked down. And in order to do that, we need the little star bit. This might be a little small. It is, but it works, but I would suggest getting the correct size. Just 
So once these are removed, and I will put them right here on this tray because we'll pass this through and immediately, uh, I'm just using this little tray here, we'll immediately put this all back together as soon as we run this wire. It does not have to come out again. Some vehicles have the shroud that goes over the heating element right here. And we can cover that in a different video, but basically you're just removing a couple of four little screws and you're gonna pull off the ducting and then you'll reveal this um, the same system that's underneath it is what we're gonna look at right now. Okay, one thing you're gonna to wanna to be very careful of is this, uh, this cover. When this pops off, um, they're a real pain to get back on. Make sure this is your hands on here holding this really well. You're going to bend this up out of the way. Let's see if we move this forward first. So we didn't pop this off, which is good. This channel right here is what we're going to use this little pry bar on. And it lifts up and I stick my end, small end right here and just pry open the, the box. And it doesn't have to be completely pried open all the way through. But it's enough for you to pass your channel or your uh, wiring harness through. Here's the OEM harness. And I set up my own harness now to come through here. What your, here's the split. So we're going to pass that split in here. The impulse is going to be to pull this thing tight and have it go straight across the box right here. Don't do that. Let it have a little bit of a loop that's living in the box so that if you do put a heater in there or, or something that takes up that space, um, you have the slack in the harness to move it out of the way. Take the end of your harness. Bit of a, bit of a cramped up little space in here. There's a lot of wires in there. And you'll just basically have to kind of find the best path through until you see the wire come out from inside here. And I can feel it now with my hand underneath the seat and I'm able to pull it out up here. Once I do that, I can pass it along a channel snap this thing all back down. Okay. And, and it's snapped back together. I can now put this back in place. Set these back over the caps. little metal trim piece without losing your screws that you just removed. You don't want to over tighten these little screws because they'll strip the wood out and be ineffective. So just a couple little cranks on them. Now, this wire from the passenger side is now found its way all the way to the, to the driver's seat here. And that's where we're gonna do the work to wire it into the fuse block. Now the driver's side does a similar thing. We pass it behind here. We use our little, uh, our little, um, 
Christmas tree style zip ties to fasten it to the B pillar. Same kind of thing, I leave it a little bit loose in the beginning here. Um, until everything is fastened in and then I go through at the very end and tighten them up. And uh, we'll do the same pathway that we did on the other side where we push this, um, these ends right along the, the inside edge of this pillar and let it follow into that little space. So. There's this little piece of foam that I, I like to take and tuck it out of the way right here. At least just while I pass my wires through. And then these have two ends that are together. Just for this little pass through, I'm actually going to tuck them in together so they're one little unit. And I slip it in on the outside of this. And right here, if you look inside, I don't know if you can see that right there. It's kind of dark, but you can see the wire passing inward into the channel. So then you'll see that the wire passes into the underneath the seat right there. And then I'll reach in with my hand and guide it the rest of the way in. Okay, and now we have these two ends of the harness. Um, this one's a little long. We can clip them shorter if you want. I like them long though because I like a lot of room to be able to uh, manipulate them and, and plug them into the uh, fuse block. So the next phase, after everything is where it's supposed to be and it ends up underneath the seat here, now we're going to start putting on all of the terminal ends.
password to this. 